next project, we're gonna have a little fun with some canvas tote bags, and I'm gonna be showing you a couple of different ways to decoupage on the canvas tote bag. And instead of uh, decoupage, we're, for the second way, I'm going to show you using some IOD transfers and really what we need to do to make that happen. So this is a, just a cute little canvas tote bag that I got at Hobby Lobby. It has three pockets and I'm going to be putting this vintage image on the center pocket. I think it's adorable. Anyway, um, the first thing that I need to do that I have done already is cut a piece of cardboard that will fit down in the pocket. And now I'm just gonna wrap it with some parchment paper and slide it down in there. The purpose of this is to keep the glue that we're going to be using from seeping through to the bottom. Now, the next thing I wanna do is lay my image down about where I'm going to want it. And I'm gonna use some painter's tape, actually. This image, I just Googled a long time ago good housekeeping covers or something like that. And this one came up with gardening, which I, I love gardening. A lot of my videos are about how we garden. So I had saved this. Just using some painter's tape there to tape that down because now I would like to, again, using just painter's tape, outline. I'm going to give myself just a little bit of space there. This painter's tape is going to stick very well to the bag, but it will leave no glue, no adhesive. But doing this is going to give me a pretty perfect outline of where I want to place the glue because I don't want to put glue all over the bag or in this case all over the pocket even though it pretty much covers the full pocket. I printed this on um, rice paper. I always give the links in the description box below the video so the rice paper that I use for a laser printer will be listed there. Now, a lot of people use Mod Podge to decoupage onto canvas. And normally when you're decoupaging, you put your image onto wet glue. I'm not going to do that because I will get a much smoother image by using the iron-on method. However, you have to have an adhesive under your paper or under your napkin or whatever you're using. You have to have some sort of adhesive under it uh, in order for the bond to happen when you iron. I've shown before that I've actually used, um, oh goodness, what's it called? Plastic wrap as a bonding mechanism. And that works, but really only for something I would only do that as a, like a decorative thing. I did it on uh, some pillows last year for Easter that had little rabbits on it and I demonstrated how to do that. This bag I would expect to be used more than a seasonal pillow. And we'll talk at the end about taking care of the bag and whether or not you can wash it, all that jazz. So what I have here is Mod Podge and it's specifically for fabric. That's the one you wanna use. Now this weave of this canvas is, it's pretty, 
uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Textured. So I am going to use a stencil brush to actually put this on. And I really don't wanna dip my brush in my Mod Podge. So I'll get some of it out here. This Mod Podge for the fabric you're gonna see is way thicker than the normal Mod Podge. Just going to get the glue on there. I'm not trying to go over the tape. I'm trying to just get close to the tape. Okay, we're going to let this completely dry and then we'll do a second coat. This is another very nice size tote bag, also from Hobby Lobby with some leather strap handles on it. And again, I have put a piece of cardboard with parchment paper on top of the cardboard inside the bag. And the image I'm going to use this time is this adorable one here. There are no gardening mistakes, only experiments. I actually have that quote in my gardening journal, which I've shown in several videos, I believe, on my channel. And I can't remember, but I think the lady, the gardener that made this comment, I think her name is Janet. I'll have to look that up and tell you later. But I'm going to do the very same technique again. Creating my border. Now we let this dry. This first coat is dry. It still is tacky to the feel, but it's dry. So now we're gonna put on the second coat. Same way as the first. Applying two coats is going to ensure that we've gotten glue all the way down in the weave of the fabric. The second coat is dry now, but it's still sticky. So what we're gonna do is take the rice paper, get it all lined up. If I can. Move the tape. And now, using another piece of parchment paper, we will take it to the iron and iron over the top.
Sticking with the gardening theme, I love IOD's transfer, the ephemeral melage. It has beautiful, beautiful transfers in it, all related to seeds and seed companies, seed catalogs. It's a gorgeous one here. And then there are a lot of little things. I used one on the back of my phone case uh, because my husband kept confusing his phone with my phone. Now he doesn't get mixed up because mine has a sticker with flowers on it. Not a sticker, a transfer. You can see there are a lot. I thought about using that one, but it was it was a little bit too big for my phone case. So what I think I'm going to do is make a pocket for the back of this bag. Remember, we're going to put this decoupage rice paper on the front. So on the back, I'm going to make a pocket for the transfer. Now you might ask, well, why don't you just put the transfer right onto the canvas bag? Because it won't work. That's the, the short answer. Canvas has a texture to it and a pretty large weave for the most part. The products that are used with these transfers can really, you can only apply them to something that is a very stable surface. Paint is going to be a stable surface, more stable than just regular cloth. Now, the other thing I would suggest is um, looking up Lynn Brundage. She has a, a very nice video on this that really explains everything about applying transfers onto fabric. The bottom line is the best kind of fabric to use is 100% cotton and one that has a very tight weave. Now, I didn't want to go buy brand new material, so I looked through the scraps I have. This is not probably the highest quality, but it is 100% cotton and it's a scrap. So that's what I'm going to use. And I think I'm gonna use this pansy one. It's not gonna be a huge, oop, not gonna be a huge pocket. This one. So it is, let's say three and a half by five and a half. And I'd like to have a little bit of a border. Uh, the top of the pocket, I'm probably going to turn under. And then the sides of the pocket, I don't know yet. I may just ravel it out and leave more of a raw edge on it. Now what I will need to use is the chalk paint. And you know, when you're decoupaging, you have to keep in mind the paint color, or in this case, the fabric color um, behind your decoupage because you, you usually want a white or very light color. The canvas bag is pretty light, kind of a off-white. So I don't need to paint behind it. The, the paper, this will still show up. It won't be quite as bright as it would if it were a totally white background, but it'll be fine. It'll still show up nicely. With the transfers, it doesn't matter what color's behind it. You could have black paint behind it and it's still gonna show up just, just fine. I have this chalk paint from Heritage Traditions All-in-One Paint which means it has a sealer in it. And this color is regal, and I thought it would look good with um, 
with the pansy seed catalog. It's probably going to be a good idea to use a couple of coats of paint. It's also going to be very important to make sure that the paint is absolutely completely dry. So it may take a while. It may take a day or two for the paint to completely cure and dry before you can apply the transfer. Any moisture that's still in the paint has to go somewhere and it will come up and it will end up releasing your transfer. That's why it's so important to make sure it's super dry. Speed drying it is not going to be helpful because you'll just trap in some moisture. So just let it dry on its own. And this color is a pretty solid pigment. So I'm thinking I won't have to do more than one coat, which will be nice. We'll just have to see how it dries out. Now to let this dry, I really don't want to leave it on the back of this um, parchment paper. I know the paint is bleeding through to the back side and I'm afraid the parchment paper would just, oops, piece of my paintbrush. The parchment paper would get stuck to the fabric. So what I'm gonna do is get a hanger and some clothespins and I'm just gonna hang it. I'll pin it from the other end and, and just hang it and let it, let it dry that way. I did end up doing a second coat of paint. Prior to applying your transfer though, you need to put down a sealer. Uh, I know that people will put the transfers right on to paint, which sometimes that can work, but if you really want the perfect bond, you need to seal under the transfer and on top of the transfer. And you'll also find using a sealer is going to make it so much easier you're not going to have to press all that hard to get the transfer to release from the backing paper. Now here I just folded down my fabric a little bit for the top of it and I'm deciding where I'm going to place it. You'll see me use the little stick that's provided with the transfers when you purchase one to press down and apply uh, and get it to release. The first thing you always want to do is use the little stick to go over the whole thing and then you can start focusing on one section at a time. But see how easily it released? That's because there's a sealer on top of that paint. Fold it over the little plastic sheet there and burnish your transfer down. And then the last step is just simply to coat it again and I'm using the same sealer that I used before, the Polyvine Dead Flat Varnish. But it is a water-based sealer. That's important. You want to definitely use a water-based sealer when using these transfers because the water-based sealer has some elasticity in it and that's gonna help keep that transfer on there when you're moving that bag back and forth. All done, top coated. It kind of has a leathery feel to it. And the back, double row of stitching, and a little pocket for maybe your phone. Nice fit. Got a nice gusset. Put quite a bit in it. It's on there very well. Corners aren't peeling up. Again, a leathery feel. Now, with this one that just has the decoupage on it using the Fabric Mod Podge. The directions on the Fabric Mod Podge say that you can wash it, 
in a washing machine on a gentle cycle in cold water only. You do not want to put it in a dryer. So you would have to let it uh, air dry, hang it up and let it air dry. Personally, I would probably not wash these in the washing machine. I would just spot clean them. This one with the transfer, it is not washable in a washing machine, only spot clean. And I put two coats of top coat on here. Again, the top coat I used was Polyvine um, Clear Dead Flat, and it is a water base, even though it says varnish, it's still a water base sealer. On a treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance? Oh, I wish it was me 